Acting like the LGBT community is a religion apparently allows you to bless them in an ecumenical service. Join us with the details from the Eternal City Church Build the Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, even though Rome just two years ago reaffirmed priests cannot bless same-sex couples because God cannot bless sin, they said, uh, that didn't stop one Belgian bishop from figuring out a way to do just that. Can you dial our viewers in on the latest escapade? Uh, on Saturday, Brad, the notoriously pro-LGBT Bishop of Antwerp, Johan Bonny, authorized uh, an LGBT pride mass at St. Norbert's Catholic Church in Antwerp. This was uh, disguised as an ecumenical service and homosexuals participated and were blessed, the same-sex couples were blessed after the celebration of the Holy Mass. Now, even though it was billed as an ecumenical service, Jules, can we kind of tear that whole veneer off? Because let's look at the timing of this event and, and what this event signified for the LGBT community. Well, this, interestingly, was the crowning jewel of the LGBT Pride events in Antwerp. And this mass was basically organized to kick off those events. I mean, you know, we have the commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And this is precisely what happened with this holy mass. Uh, so it was basically a pride mass under the guise of an ecumenical prayer meeting. So, okay, well, why did Bonnie, Bishop uh, Bonnie's diocese, have to use such a subterfuge as an ecumenical service uh, instead of just calling it what it was, a, a pride mass? Uh, well, uh, precisely because in 2021, the then Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, now the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, issued a very strong diktat, as, as you pointed out, uh, uh, banning same-sex blessings, very clearly stating categorically that God cannot bless sin, and the Church cannot be authorized to do this. Uh, since then, of course, there have been two seasons of same-sex blessings in Germany, in open defiance of the DDF's ruling, but uh, Bishop Bonney probably did not want his knuckles wrapped. And uh, so he brought in the Protestants, you know, you can always put the blame on the liberal Protestants. Uh, but also there was something very interesting that happened in March in Antwerp. The uh, LGBT activists tried to organize an LGBT iftar event and that is the the party which follows the breaking of the ramadan fast uh, that was a big flop because instead of flocking to the lgbt iftar uh, muslims you know not just turned up their nose but said that this was offensive to them so uh, the LGBT activists have been hit by a double whammy, and so they've got to look for better ways of disguising their, uh, their perversions, to put it crudely. That's, that's excellent insight, Jules. Now, Belgium's Bishop Bonnie, he's got quite a reputation of pushing the LGBT agenda in his own diocese. Now, can you fill our viewers in a bit on his backstory? And now in September 2022, Brad, the Flemish bishops, in a historic first, actually published uh, a liturgy for same-sex blessings. They presented it apparently to the Vatican, and this is what Bishop Bonnie said. He said that he had spoken with Pope Francis, and I quote, for the blessing of homosexual couples that we have recently published is in line with the uh, teachings of Pope Francis. He then said, I was called to Rome, and there I told, said what was my opinion about it. I've also personally spoken to Pope Francis about it. I now know what he thinks, and that for me is the most important thing. Uh, so basically what he's trying to say is that Pope Francis has no problem at all with the liturgy for same-sex blessings. Now, organizers, just to tear this whole facade of ecumenical, uh, ecumenical service down even more, and just uh, what it is as a pride mass, uh, allowing uh, the blessing of same-sex couples, 
the organizers of this Pride Mass are actually pointing a finger to Pope Francis and what he said at World Youth Day as a justification for this event. Uh, what, what are they referring to there? Oh, absolutely. William Bombeek, the uh, main organizer, actually quoted Pope Francis, and he said how repeatedly Pope Francis hammered the theme of inclusivity during the World Youth Day celebrations over many days. Uh, and Pope Francis, of course, we know, shouted everyone, everyone, everyone in Portuguese and got the congregation, you know, the audience to echo his uh, words. And Francis also said, uh, you know, why not homosexuals? Include them as well. Uh, but what's even more significant is that the Flemish bishops had gone down quoting Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation, Amoris Letizia, when they published their same-sex guideline uh, liturgy. And this is what they said. Pope Francis expressly asks these families to offer respectful pastoral guidance so that their homosexual members can enjoy the necessary support to understand and fully accomplish the will of God in their lives. Pope Francis asks to value and support the judgment of people's consciences, even in life situations that do not fully realize the objective ideal of marriage. And they quote Pope Francis' Amoris Letizia, no one can be condemned forever because that is not the logic of the gospel. Jules, let me insert a question here. Um, there was, uh, you know, right there, they're trying to say, let's get all, let's get together. It's better if we're all together, we can talk and discuss and find. Do you see in any of this from Bishop Bonnie and what he said and, and uh, any of the outreach, so to speak, do you ever see them trying to bring the gospel message of the you know, Ten Commandments of uh, thou shalt not commit sin, take pride in it, and still get to heaven message uh, that's kind of interwined throughout the, through the, the Old and New Testament? Do you see them trying to actually bring people up to speed on the Catholic message uh, at any point in time in a, in a real pastoral manner? Uh, Brad, there is never, ever any talk about what we would call the New Testament gospel. Uh, repentance, uh, complete change of lifestyle, you know, you're putting your faith in Jesus alone for your salvation, becoming a new creation in Christ, uh, rejecting the ways of the flesh. Uh, this is totally absent from the vocabulary of the LGBT Catholic Protestant, whatever, agenda. And uh, the, the only gospel, if you can call it that, that is presented at such events is a psychotherapeutic gospel that, uh, you know, is fatally flawed and designed to take people to hell. So in that way, this psychobabble type gospel, I mean, in that way, you can at least call it kind of an ecumenical outreach to some, at least it's not Catholic anyway, at least they're, they're saying it's not Catholic. Um, Jules, do you think Rome, you know, based on Bishop Bonnie and he talked with Pope Francis, he said, oh, I, I know the mind of the Pope and all this. And basically, you know, Father James Martin says the same type of things and others do. Jules, do you think that Rome's response, uh, what, what do you think Rome's response will be to this event, if anything? And, and you expect more events like this to occur in the future? Uh, Brad, you've put that very succinctly. This is not Catholic, it's not authentically Protestant, it's not Orthodox, it's not Christian, period. And uh, sincere and faithful Christians from all these traditions have responded very categor categorically rejecting the LGBT ideology. And what will Rome do? That's a good question. My response can be condensed into one word, nothing. Uh, because Rome has done nothing, despite there be, being two, if not three seasons of same self, hundreds of priests are virtually blessing uh, uh, tens of dozens of uh, same sex couples in Catholic churches in Germany. And the 
hope did not bat an eyelid. So it's like the zebra crossing or the zebra crossing, as Americans would put it, in Italy. Uh, you know, uh, when my wife and I try and cross the road, the, the zebra crossing is there. But nobody, you know, most people hardly ever take that seriously. And you really have to put your hand out to stop a car if you don't want to uh, get run over. And it's like that. Uh, the Vatican has laid down the law, but people are flouting the law left, right and center. And the Vatican will do nothing about it. Well, you know, the real losers are those uh, members of the LGBT community uh, who are being misled by bad Catholic shepherds. They're being taught that they can sin however they want. And instead of repenting, like the rest of us have to, they actually take pride in their sinfulness and they can still go to heaven. That's the message that seems to be coming from these shepherds. Woe to false shepherds who mislead Christ's sheep. Uh, Jules, thank you so much for your report and for your analysis. Thank you, Brad.